How to Integrate Google Cloud Secret Manager with Jenkins. If you've ever managed multiple Jenkins controllers at once in the past, there's usually a chance that you've also had to manage the same credentials on those controllers. You might have had scripts to manage those credentials for you, but now you're thinking a centralized credentials management solution is just the ticket for you. In this video, we're going to be using Google Cloud Secret Manager as our centralized credentials management solution. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.319.1. This controller is running on CentOS 7.9. In order to integrate easily with Google Cloud Secret Manager, we're going to need to install a plugin. And that plugin that we're going to install is the Google Cloud Secret Manager. So I'm going to look for GCP Secret, GCP Secrets Manager Credentials Provider. So I'm going to click on Install and then Download Now and Install After Restart. Once it has downloaded, let's go ahead and do the restart. Now that we're back, we're going to go over to GCP and do all of our setup there. Then we'll come back and finish up within our controller. So I'm going to go over to GCP. And what I'm going to do is on my dashboard, I am going to create a new project. I'm going to create a standalone project to manage all of my credentials. And this project, I'm going to call Jenkins-Secret-Manager. And I'm just putting it in my standard organization. I'm going to click on Create. Now, once this project has been created, we're going to go into it and do a few more things. OK, so that's been selected. We are now good to go with that. So here's our project name, Jenkins Secret Manager. Our project ID is also Jenkins Secret Manager. We'll need that again in a few moments. Now we need a service account. So I'm going to go to I am an admin and go over to service account. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new service account. I'm going to give it the name of, what am I going to give it the name of? Jenkins-service-account. Not very interesting, but it'll work. I'm going to click on Create and Continue. Now we need to add two roles. And these roles are documented within the plugin documentation. The first role that we're going to do is Secret Manager Secret Accessor. And the second role that we're going to add is the Secret Manager Viewer. So Secret Manager Viewer, right here. So two roles, Secret Accessor and Viewer of Secret Manager. Let's go ahead and click on Continue. We're not going to worry about granting any users to this. We'll go ahead and click on Done. Now the next thing that we need to do is create a key associated with this service account. So we'll click on the email that we just created. We'll click on keys. Now, there is no key created yet. So we'll say add key, create new key. We'll select JSON and click on create. Now it's asking us to save the file, which I am going to do right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this. So next up, let's go back over to our controller and start wiring it up so it's going to be aware of how to connect to GCP using this service account. Now, before I leave this, what I want to do is I want to go back over to my project, which is right here, which leaves me on that. So here, this is where I want to go. All right, so I want to go to project, go to the home. Let's go back to the project. And I want to have my project ID. So I'm going to copy my project ID because this is what I need. Now let's go ahead and head back over to our controller and let's modify our controller to use this project ID that we just saved so it knows how to connect over to GCP. So we're going to say Manage Jenkins, Configure System. We're going to search for GCP and for the project. Now this is not the project name. This, this may trip you up. This is not the project name, it is the project ID. Now, in this case, my project name and project ID were exactly the same. So I'm going to paste that in, and I'm going to click on Save. Now, this does not do anything directly with 
GCP at this point. We've just defined which project to connect to. Let's go take a quick look at the documentation for the plugin. Now, if we were running this on GCP, what we would do is we would attach that default service account that we just created. Would have been no problem. However, I am running Jenkins LTS on a Vagrant box on my local machine. So since I'm not running Jenkins on GCP, I need to set the environment variable, Google application credentials, with the path to where this JSON file that we just downloaded is on our controller. Now at this point, I haven't uploaded that file. So follow me here. Let's go over to our controller. And I'm logged into the controller and I'm actually sitting inside of var cache Jenkins. Now, where you put this file does matter. You could put it in var lib Jenkins, but we'll see momentarily that there is a secret key in there, a private key. So in my case, I want to put this in var cache Jenkins. There may be other places to put it, but for my example, I'm using var cache Jenkins. Now, I'm also going to name the file. Let's see if I can find my name here. There it is. I'm going to name it GCP Jenkins Project. That's all I need to do. It doesn't have to be the same name as before, but the contents of the file do need to be the same. And let me go grab the contents of my file. Okay, that is right here. Okay, once that comes into the copy, there we go, okay. So as I was just saying, there is a private key buried within this JSON blob. So you'd want to protect this JSON key so it's only readable by the Jenkins process. So that's the first step. We need this file on our controller. Secondly, we're going to add that environment variable. But where do we add that? Well, let's go ahead and get it ready to go here. So inside of our cache, we can see this GCP Jenkins project file. It's owned by root currently. Let's go ahead and change the owner to Jenkins, Jenkins, and GCP, whoops. So now that file is owned by Jenkins. And in fact, if I really wanted to crank it down, which I'm going to, I'm also going to change the bits to 600. So right now, Jenkins is the only process that can actually read that file. So now what I want to do, since I'm on CentOS or a Fedora-based distribution, I'm going to edit my sysconfig file for Jenkins. I'm just gonna to go to the bottom and I'm going to type export, find my copy paste here, Google application credentials, and I'm going to put in the path to my file, which is varcash Jenkins, GCP Jenkins project and close my quotes. Okay, so now that I've done that, we've saved the file, we're now exporting that environment variable. Now we need to restart Jenkins. But I can't just do a slash restart because that won't reload and pick up this change to the sysconfig file. I actually need to restart the syscontrol process. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to say, and since I'm root, I know it's root. Don't 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 yell at me across the video. But I'm just going to say system CTL stop Jenkins. And now I'm going to do system CTL start Jenkins. And now I'm going to tail my startup log. And let's see what happens here. Because if it messes up like it just did, you're going to see an error that says error reading credential file from environment variable var cache Jenkins GCP Jenkins project JSON, unrecognized token something. What that means is when I pasted in that JSON file, I left off some characters. Now, the good part of it is when this started up, it was able to find the file. So I know I have my wiring for my environment variable correct, but my file is messed up. So let's go and fix that file. So I am still in there. So let's go ahead and type VI GCP. And I can see right up here, I messed up and pasted in things wrong. So let's just do this. Let's go ahead and quit that file. I am going to remove that file, GCP-Jenkins project. I'm going to, yes, 
I am going to create a new file, Jenkins project. Right, this time, I'm going to make sure that I'm in insert mode, which I am. I'm going to copy the contents and then I'm going to verify it before I leave. So we can look here, I can see the closing, and now I see my opening, and the very first line is type service account. So now we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's check this out. It's owned by root. Let's change our owner. And let's do the file. And finally, let's do a 600 on that. One more check. So now we've got just a 600. Jenkins, GCP Jenkins project. All of that looks good. So again, systemctl, stop Jenkins. And now system CTL start Jenkins. And then let's tail that log again. And as it starts up, what we're going to see, if everything is successful, we're not going to see any log errors. However, at this point, what we're seeing is we are getting a permission denied. Secret Manager API has not been used in the project before, or it is disabled. So at this point, we haven't enabled Secret Manager within our project. So that's what we're going to go do now. OK, so let's go ahead and go back over to GCP, and let's enable Secret Manager. So that's under Security. We'll go down to Secret Manager, and we will click on, once it renders, Enable. And this takes just a few seconds. Sometimes in more than just a few seconds. But then once this is complete, we'll now be able to create secrets within GCP. All right, so now we're back to the point to where we can create the secret. So now that we can create a secret, let's go ahead and create one. So we'll say create secret. We're going to give it the name of TT slash secret dash text. You can name it anything you want. Here's a quick suggestion, though. This name that you're giving it is going to be the ID of the credential that you will use over in Jenkins. So maybe no spaces, keep it all lowercase, use dashes, underscores, whatever your standard is. But this is going to be the ID that's going to be inside of Jenkins. Let's go and give it a secret value of password. Now, you could upload a file if you wanted to. We're not going to do that. I'm just going to say the password value is password. Now, with using Secret Manager, you have to define some labels. The labels are defined over in the plugin documentation. In this case, we're using Secret Text. I need to create a label, Jenkins Credentials Type of String. So I'm going to say Jenkins Credentials Type. Go back here, add a label, and the value is going to be all lowercase string, as notated here. The actual documentation for these labels are at the very top of the documentation for this plugin. And they're defined right here, Jenkins Credential Type, one of the following types. You can do string, which maps to a secret text, a file, which maps to a secret file, a username password, which maps to username password, an SSH user private key, SSH user private key, and also certificate. So let's go back over to our secret. And let's go ahead and click on Create Secret. So now we have defined our secret of TT secret text. So let's go back over to our controller and see what happens. I'll click on Dashboard. We'll create a new item. Go ahead and log in again, because I timed out. I'm going to call this GCP Pipeline. Click OK. And my example pipeline is going to be this. Scroll down to the bottom. We're just going to paste it right in. I'm going to be accessing the credentials from TT Secret Text loading it into an environment variable, and then I'm going to use that environment variable in a header to pass over to an echo service, which will actually get masked out because this is a credential. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Save. Now let's go and take a look at Manage Jenkins. 
manage credentials. And now we see our TT secret text up here in credentials. So let's go ahead and click on dashboard, GCP, click on build now. And as it runs, what we'll see is it's masking supported pattern matches of TT secret text. And it's masking it out as we make our curl call. You can see that that's masked out there. And it's also echoed back to us, but since it's a credential, it automatically gets masked out. Why would you use Google Cloud Secret Manager instead of the Jenkins Credential Store? First off, Secret Manager gives you the ability to do rotation of secrets easily. Secondly, it gives you the ability to secure and audit credentials in a centralized way. And finally, it gives you the ability to share secrets extremely easily across multiple Jenkins controllers. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.